PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete and Pete's Tools, great to see you here again today. Hey, I've had an email from a few of you fellas asking me, once you buy your plasma cutter, do you really have to buy a big compressor to run it? Well, according to the box, you need like about 100 PSI to run one of these plasma cutters. Today we'll do a couple of little experiments for you fellas, and we'll see if you can actually run one of these 40 amp or 50 amp plasma cutters on one of these small compressors. Most of you guys have got one of these small compressors lying around your garage somewhere, or you use it for a nail gun, or you just a little bit of spray painting or whatever, and they're not really designed to run this. But today, guys, we'll find out once and for all if you can actually cut using one of these 40 or 50 amp plasma cutters with a baby compressor. Anyway, guys, same as usual, you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day to me in the comments below if you want, and uh, let's see what we can cut. <laughs> So guys, what we're talking about here is one of those little baby compressors like you can buy at any hardware store or big box store. They range from about 150 bucks to 200 bucks. Yeah, um, I've got a big compressor, I've got a, um, a three horsepower compressor that's belt drive. But this compressor here is just a little direct drive thing, they make a hell of a lot of noise. And like I said, they're all ideal just if you want to do a little spray painting or, or stapling with a nail gun or something like that. But I don't think they're really designed for plasma cutting. Anyway guys, we'll kick it in the guts and see what happens, eh? <laughs> All right, guys, we'll turn them on and we'll see how long it takes for it to charge up the tank. As you can it's quite noisy, guys. Now, what is it? We're only about uh, 200 litres a minute, so it's quite slow. Here we go. Actually, 120 there, guys. We're just under about 110. And as you can hear there, guys, I've got some sort of air leak. I don't advise you to have any sort of air leak at all if you're using a little compressor because it's going to rob what little power you're going to have. So I'm just going to sort out that air leak, guys. Right, I got rid of that air leak, guys. So now let's see if we can actually cut. What I've done is the plasma cutter is on 40 amps, the maximum that we can cut. And I've got my compressor. We've seen it stop before. We were running just under 110 pound up here. So we'll see if we can actually cut. Well, we cut that, guys. Uh, I was about to say the compressor didn't clamp back on, but it just did just then. So if we let it stop, guys. Yep, we stopped again. So let's give it another crack. Give it a kick in the guts, Nigel. See if we can do it again. As you know, oh, I hit the camera with that, I think, guys. <laughs> as you might notice, guys, I'm doing a whirly shape as if we we're cutting out something for a stencil or something. So we're not exactly going straight across. But that compressor didn't start again then. So it's obviously got enough grunt to do that. So if we cut it straight across, guys, see what happens. <laughs> Well, the press is on, but there you go. 
So this is about three mil, guys. So, you know, you can cut some really good steel with it on a little baby compressor. You're not going to get a very long cut, so I don't think. I don't know how long we can actually do it. I'll try it. I'll charge the compressor right up, and then I'll do a cut, and you guys can see how long it takes before it kicks back in again. So what I'll do now, guys, is I'll just let the air out of the compressor until it hits the uh, restart, and then we'll let it restart, and I'll see how long I can cut for. So we charge it up so we know it's fully charged. Right, guys, that's stopped filling up now, so we'll see if we can get one strip out of it before it starts again. Cut the right. Out there, guys. So you've seen that guys, we've got about almost, well over three quarters of the way down this, this probably, what is it, two feet. So we'll just cut the rest off. So it does definitely work guys, you're not going to be able to cut full sheets with it, but if you're just doing little bits and pieces, I tell you what, that'll be ideal for, if you're working on the bodywork of your car or something, you're just cutting out rust and just little bits and pieces would be ideal. So you don't really need a big huge compressor unless you're going to do like big long cuts. Right, now let's have another go. So what we'll do now guys, is we'll wait until the compressor kicks back in again and starts up and I'll continue cutting this time. With my big compressor, the issue I have is if I keep cutting when the compressor cuts in to recharge itself, I blow all the circuit breakers in my garage because it's just the load is too much because I've got a big compressor plus I'm sucking the, the uh, 220 out for the plasma cutter, so it just gets too much and it just blows out all my circuit breakers because I'm only running on a 15 amp circuit. So now guys, I'll just keep on cutting when the compressor cuts back in and see if we blow the fuses. If we don't blow the fuses, then that'll be ideal because you can still cut while the thing's running. Does do a good cut guys. Here we go. So it's worked, guys. Beautiful. Well, if you see what I'm cutting here, guys, it's about a foot and a half, right? Maybe two feet, maybe. I don't know, I'm not that good at Imperial, but it's about a foot and a half at least. So what I'll do is I'll cut this, but I'll focus the camera on the gauges on the compressor so you know how much air we're using because I just can't get the focus on both at once. So bear with me, fellas. Right, here, guys, watch those gauges. I'm going to cut exactly the same length again. See what happens. You'll see exactly how much air we're using. You see it, guys? I'm about halfway down, here we go. Still cutting, still cutting, still cutting. Finish. What do we end up at? This ended up bottoming me out at about 60 psi, guys. And at 60 psi, you could still plasma cut like three or four mil plate. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that you do that all the time, but if you just had to get out of a bit of a jam and cut a, cut a longer piece of metal, you could probably do it. Um, but you couldn't run this constantly all the time as well as your plasma card, I don't think. But I mean, yeah, at 60 psi it was holding its own. So there you go. So guys, can you plasma cut with a little baby air compressor? Yeah, you can. If you're only cutting like two or three foot strips, and you're not cutting much more than three or four mil, I'd say yes, you certainly can. It'd be ideal, like I said before, for, for cutting out car panels or doing rust repairs in the car or that sort of stuff, because you're not doing great big long runs. See, while I was doing great big long runs, I was cutting whole sheets. I was doing two and a half meter lengths, 
and this would be way too small for that. But if you're just doing bits and pieces around the workshop and that sort of thing, and you just don't want to spend the money to get started after you've brought your plasma cutter, try one of these. Why not? It's worth a crack, Nigel. Anyway, guys, same as usual. Like the video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day to me at petestools.com if you want. And uh, we'll see you next time, eh? Bye. Peach Tools.com.com.com.